Welcome, everyone, to Vegas Revealed, episode 64. Las Vegas gets ready to open at 100% capacity. What restrictions will be lifted and what stays put? Plus, another big headliner just announced over at the new resorts world. And two resorts on the Strip are pushing for their employees to get vaccinated. And there's some money on the line here, too. Plus, our exclusive poll of the week. The results are in when it comes to how hard you want to party in Vegas. All right, it's time to spin the wheel. Welcome, everyone, to Vegas Revealed. I'm Dana Roselli, along with Sean McAllister. And listen, if you love that song, our theme song, and a lot of people do, Sean, apparently. We're getting comments about it. (laughs) That's right. We got a direct message from Jacob Snowberger on Twitter. He was saying, hey, let's go to Vegas, baby. Who sings it? I can't find it, and I love your show. And, you know, we have had this request before. Now, some people say they're annoyed with the song. I'm not going to lie but that it sticks with them. Hey, as long as it sticks with them, I mean, then it's doing its job, right? Right, but we've tried to find it. And, you know, we have an editing software system that we use for the podcast, and it's in the catalog of music. We found it, loved it, and we've been using it ever since. So I don't think you can actually purchase it. Yeah, I don't think so, unless you purchase a music library. Right. And it happens to be in there. I know. Um, But we have looked for the artist who sings uh, the Vegas Baby song, (laughs) And um, we're going to continue our search. Yes. And we'll have to have them on as as guests here on the podcast because <laughs> we're like, we're I feel like we're working together at this point. That's right. Little do they know they're the theme song of the Vegas Real <laughs> podcast. But anyway, Jacob, thanks for listening and thanks for your note. Jacob's from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. What up, Cleve? Yep, Cleveland. How's it going? All right, let's get to the big news of the week. June 1st is a big day. It's a big day because that is when the floodgates are going to officially open, capacity limits are being lifted, and the entire city is going back to 100% capacity. Ooh, yeah, it was a big deal. Unexpected announcement. I know the governor was having a presser and was like, okay, what's this about? And then... I saw I the one hundred. I know we always get nervous, right? <laughs> anytime the anytime the governor's you know throws an impromptu announcement our way, we're like, ooh, <sighs> we grit our teeth. But this time, it's like, hey. We're opening back up. I know. And then he's also lifting the social distancing requirements, which I found interesting. So you no longer have to social distance. But the big question that everyone keeps asking is, well, what about the mask? Do we still have to wear a mask? And the answer is yes. Yes. So masks are going to stick around for a little bit. That is a state mandated thing that we have going on here. So what's going to be going down over the next few weeks, starting on May 1st, Here in the state of Nevada, each county uh, at that point is going to make their own decisions on COVID-19 mitigation tactics. That means masks and social distancing, capacity limits. Uh, Before May 1st, up until this point, uh, those directives have been coming from the state. May 1st, it switches back to counties to make those decisions. And then uh, starting June 1st, one month later, we're just ripping the Mm Band-Aid off and welcoming everyone back. I know. Well, so is there a chance on May 1st that the county could say, yeah, we're ready to go back to 100% and it could be earlier than June 1st? Yeah, it definitely could be. Okay. There are some counties, Nye County, for example, here in Nevada, they've already announced that Mm -hmm. they're going back to 100% starting May 1st when they have that decision-making power. And I think they wanted to lift the masks too, but then it, everyone was talking back and forth going, no, that's a state thing. You right. can't. So, um, but it's interesting that they were like ready to do that as well. So we have a lot of people vaccinated here in Las Vegas. We have opened up to 16 and above a while ago now. It's been a couple of weeks. So more and more people are getting the vaccine. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of available appointments now. We have a, a lot of supply with the vaccine coming into Southern Nevada here and lots of appointments available for anyone who want them. That's right. There was an article um, written in CNN Travel this week, and the headline is just uh, something that we all love to see that live here and people that love to visit here. And it says Las Vegas is set to come out of COVID-19 better than ever. Uh, 
So that is a relief. And they go through in the article a lot of things that we've been talking on the podcast about, you know, along the way, you know, the new resorts that have opened, the new attractions that have opened, the vaccinations that have moved along uh, really well. And then also uh, some things that are coming, like Resorts World and our new convention center is now finished. And you and I were just chatting going, I think we have the big uh, construction convention coming. And I think that's June, which is going to be great. That's an indoor-outdoor convention, so they can do a lot of stuff, put the big equipment in the parking lot. Right, so I think June is uh, the first big convention that's coming back. There are some smaller conventions and gatherings that have been taking place here over the last oh, month or so, I would say. But yeah, the big one is coming up in June, and then... I think there are several others planned or in the works. I know there's people keep announcing things, so the more that that keeps happening great we're here we've got a brand new convention center we've got the uh boring company's new loop the loop that goes between the wings of the convention center to shuttle people around a a little bit quicker and easier so we have all systems go to bring conventions back to las vegas which really is i mean a big bulk of our our tourism and our business that happens here that's right and don't worry everyone when you come to visit karaoke's back too (laughs) oh karaoke's amazing so if you listen back to episode 35 of vegas revealed that's when we went over to ellis island Mm. and we were at the the front yard over at ellis island that's their Big patio space, great for watching games. They have a great brunch right now. They have it all decked out for spring, and it looks really great. And we asked uh, Christina Ellis when we were speaking with her about the karaoke because Ellis Island has been, it's become known for its karaoke lounge. It really has. I mean, it's a classic spot, and karaoke is a big deal here in Las Vegas. People like to watch shows, but sometimes they want to be the show. That's you know? right. They like to get up on stage and belt it out. We have very popular uh, places around town for karaoke. Yeah, and Ellis Island has announced that they're back at doing the karaoke nights, and so that's a great thing. And that will only complement what they have there going on at the front yard and then the casino, so good for them. See, karaoke lets you be the Vegas headline. <laughs> That's too. right. And then Dino's, which is one of our uh, popular oh, spots man, for yeah. karaoke, too. It's a hot spot. It's a fun place if you've never been. It's just kind of like north of, is it north of the stratosphere? North or of south? the stratosphere. Yeah, a little yep. bit north of the stratosphere. And they are open, too. We checked out their Facebook, and on April uh, 8th, they put up an announcement that karaoke was was back, and they were in full force. So um, belt it out, everyone. And we know you've been so saving up your voice all COVID, and you're ready. <laughs> you're ready. Warm it up. I love it. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, going back to the vaccines really quick, there are a, a well, there's one uh, casino in particular that's really trying to incentivize its employees to go out and get vaccinated. The Cosmopolitan has this big pool of money Mm -hmm. that it says it's willing to pay out as bonuses to employees if they get a certain percentage vaccinated by May 1st. That's right. It's eight. They're looking for 80 percent to be vaccinated. And I think they were in the 60s percentile at this time. And so what are we mid April? So they got a couple weeks and it's more of you and I were going, well, is that fair? Because you can't really force people to get the vaccine. But it, what it is, is it's kind of like a team building thing. It's like, hey, listen, if you were going to get vaccinated and you planned on it, get it now get it before May 1st so that our resort can have 80% at least of our staff vaccinated so that people are more comfortable to come here. So it's kind of like everyone who planned on getting it, maybe encouragement from other staff, like, hey, go get the vaccine. I want my bonus. Right. And <laughs> and we're talking about, I think, over a million dollars that they've set aside to pay out to employees. This is a million dollars total that would sure. get divvied up and paid out as bonuses. But hey, I mean... It's a lot. It's a bonus is a bonus, right? No kidding. <laughs> yeah, so it's... Um, and if you don't get the vaccine, they will have on-site testing there. You'll have to be tested, I believe it's weekly, right. for COVID. And it will cost you to get it on-site. 
And I was curious about that too. I was like, why does it cost? Because the wind is doing something similar, but basically it's a convenience fee of having to get it there. So the state pays for your test. The actual test, which they said is about $100, but the convenience fee of actually having it at your workplace is what you'll have to front. But you can go to other places off site and get it completely free but that has to be kind of on your own time right and so that's what the win uh, resort is doing there's no financial incentive but they are uh, letting employees know that um if you are not vaccinated, you will have to present a weekly negative COVID test. Right. And I think the win was charging $15 for the convenience of having right. it there on site. Yep. So kind of similar thing. But they're, they're working to try and let people know that, hey, uh, we're, we're, we're ready for you to come back and we want you to feel comfortable. And then some people say, well, what does it matter if the staff you know, has vaccines, if the people visiting don't have? It's like, well, the staff are the people who are you know, cleaning your rooms and serving your food. and They're it, the ones that keep <laughs> the properties up and running so yeah. that you can be there to visit. <laughs> right. So, you know, if they're protected, um, obviously, you know, there's lots of research, but, you know, you, you could still be a carrier of it and this and that, but if your symptoms would be a lot less, but it, you're less likely to get it. And the less likely, you know, the staff is to have it, then the less likely, likely you are to get it. Right. And, you know, that brings up kind of an important point that, that we've been talking about, Dana, as we are, uh, you know, coming out of this pandemic era and Las Vegas does ramp up back to full momentum on the Las Vegas Strip. Something that people have noticed is that there is service that's a little slower uh, across the board, across really. Across the board, yeah. And that's because uh, hotels, casinos, restaurants haven't been able to hire 100% of their staff back yet. They're operating with staff levels under what they've been, what we've really come to know for Las Vegas hospitality. So if you are coming in the immediate future, just keep in mind that Las Vegas is still ramping up hiring. I know that, you know, there have been a, a handful of hotel casinos that are holding job fairs even over the Ugh. past week or so. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. You know, people to get we their need jobs it. back. Yeah, Man. we need it for sure. But yeah, you just have to kind of like pack your patience a little bit. You know, don't expect to sit down and, and get a drink ASAP. You need to wait a minute, look over the menu. You know, it just takes a little longer. But I must say, I did recently do a quick day and a half trip to Los Angeles and the service wasn't any faster there. So I think it's obviously... I'm assuming. And how, how was it in San Diego? San Diego, same thing. Yeah. So it's it's slow across the board, across the country, because yep. everyone's getting back and they might not have that full staff yet. And everyone else is ready to just go for it, eat out, drink out, and and, and enjoy life. But, but they need to get their staff up to par. And it'll happen. We'll yeah. get there. But I did, as we were waiting for... Uh, our food to come and waiting for a, a server to come to our table down in San Diego. I did. I looked at my, my husband, Shane, and I was like, you know what? At least we're in San Diego. Yes. So if you do experience any delays in service while you're in Vegas, just sit back, take a breath and say, you know what? <laughs> at least I'm in Vegas. Yes. And I'm out. And if I have to sit a little longer, at least I'm not in my living room. It is what it is. <laughs> right. All right. Well, speaking of living rooms, that was our poll question of the week. Well, something to do with that anyway. Should we get to it? <laughs> Let's do it. We asked, and you have responded to our exclusive Vegas Revealed Weekly Poll. I just love our our, <laughs> our intro to our poll. It's just my favorite. <laughs> you know, it humors us, doesn't it? It really does. All right, you ready for the poll question? This week, it is on a scale of couch surfing to crowd surfing. What's your current party mode? Vote and comment is what we said, and we're going to use some of them in our podcast. And so we asked people to go and answer, and we got a wide variety of results. So first, let's talk about the choices that we had there, Sean. And I know you were you were key in coming up with some of these phrases. Yeah, so on a scale of couch surfing to crowd surfing, are you more inclined to sip on some wine at home? Be a one-and-done kind of the person if you do go out to a bar. Open up a tab, maybe stay a while, enjoy the atmosphere. Or are you the kind of person who is ready to get out there, pull an all-nighter, watch the sunrise, 
come on home as people are still out walking their dogs and getting ready for a new day. Uh, but you haven't quite gone to sleep yet. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, it's a good a good you know variety of answers here. So um, believe it or not, forty five percent of you said you are still wine at home. Wow. Yeah. So I was surprised at that too. But I think people are still. I think there are a lot of people that say as much as they're ready to go out now and then, they are still a little attached to home because they can look how they want, they can be comfortable and cozy, and they can still. Get drunk. Well, and I, I think it would, which, yeah, I mean, what better place to do it? But I've also talked to people who kind of still have a little bit of a, like, PTSD from the past year. Mm-hmm. And it's like for having it drilled into our heads to stay away from people. No hugging, no handshakes, no, uh, like, if somebody coughs or sneezes, like, you kind of whip your head around and you're like, ooh, mm-hmm. do they have it? Right. <laughs> you know, and it's it's like a mental block that we're all going to have to get over. It's so true. And you know, the next one, one and done at the bar is we we vote too. And I voted for that because that is totally me. Like I'm ready to like go out and I love being out and I'm like, have one, but then I'm kind of ready to go home, but not when I'm with my close knit group of people, if that makes sense. I'm comfortable around like everyone that I've, hung out with and are my close friends and business partner bubble. through the year. The bubble. I'm good when I'm with the bubble when I'm out. <laughs> I can be there for a while and it won't be one and done. It'll be one, two, and three and done. But then, <laughs> but but it, it, but if it's just like a thing, I start to get that feeling of, yeah, I'm ready to go home. So that's where I'm at. What did you vote for? My vote was open up a tab and stay for a bit. <laughs> now, I, I, didn't, I did not vote for pulling an all-nighter simply because... If I pull an all-nighter at this point in my life, it's going to take me a week to recover from it. (laughs) So, no, we'll open up a tab, stay out for a bit, but still get home at a sensible time. (laughs) Right. And I didn't mention one and done at the bar was 16% of you voting on that. And then open a tab and stay a bit, 20 8%. Eight yep. percent. So a little bit up there, and then pulling all all nighter was the lowest voted choice at twelve percent. So everyone's not ready for that. But we did get a couple comments of some folks that say they are ready for that. So Ryan Daly says the only way to do Vegas, and that is pulling an all nighter every night. Wow. wow. <laughs> And that's when, <laughs> if you come to Vegas and pull an all nighter every single night. Then that's probably like you've filled your Vegas quota for the year Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go home, like live this off for a while and we'll come back and do it again in another year. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And and Glinda Gaines wrote in and she says she's still wine at home. But with that being said, when she does go out, she's opening a tab. All right. (laughs) Okay. Suzette says wine, good food and great music. And of course the hubby okay so is that a wine at home i'm guessing i think so yeah she must have voted for wine at home wine so she must yeah she must make some good food so invite us over suzette yeah why not (laughs) and then nika she had uh web surfing at home but (laughs) then she changed it she said okay i'm gonna modify and she was saying that um she's still wine at home but she got vaccinated so she's still quarantining until she hits that 14 day but then i'm in uh arizona and on a spa weekend with some girlfriends so she's just waiting but then she's ready to go kind of relax but get out and enjoy some travel yeah And Cecilia says, uh, I've not been out in ages, so I I almost don't even remember how it feels, but I've always enjoyed a nice glass of wine at home, so it's a a win-win at the moment, Mm. which is very true. But then there's Mike. (laughs) Mike goes for it, right? He says, honestly, even before 2020, going out was too much of a chore for me, sadly. And he has the laughing face. He says, if it's not a special occasion, of course, he's his birthday, etc. I'm perfectly happy getting hammered at home. (laughs) Cheap, just as fun, and no worries of drinking and driving. So, Mike Vegas 78, we like your perspective. All right, Mike. (laughs) So, so again, uh, our poll results are in. You can check them out on our Twitter page. And then, you know, every week we have a poll. So please chime in. We love to read your answers. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of partying and getting back out there, uh, we have been really excited about some of the entertainment announcements that are coming out of Resorts World, which is, as we've mentioned before in previous episodes, the big new resort that's opening up across Las Vegas Boulevard from the Wynn. 
That's right. They keep announcing a bunch of different things, you know, their shops, their restaurants, and their headliners. And one of them was Zed. We talked about that last week, which is really cool. And he's going to be doing the day club and the nightclub. And now they announced another resident DJ. And they have booked for, I think it's a multi-year contract here, is Tiesto, which is huge because Tiesto is huge. And you know what I love about it, Sean, is Tiesto was kind of like, he was big before like all the DJs started yes. getting big. Do you know what I mean? Like yep. I don't know what the right word or category that is, but I love that he's it's still like going an OG. strong. Yeah, he's an OG, the original, right? So I love that they are bringing Tiesto to Resorts World. And I, you know what? I feel like this is a good, a good fit. Like he's in a new era in his life. He's a dad now. Like this is a good new gig, a ni- nice brand new club a new nightlife uh entertainment company that he's mm-hmm. working for here so well done i yeah. mean resorts world is just firing on all cylinders announcing a, a ton of uh, restaurants and bars along with so, uh, some innovative retail and now some incredible entertainment too and by the way we are going to be diving uh, deeper into everything that resorts world is going to have to offer uh, coming up in in the next few weeks, in yeah. the next few episodes. We've got our, our list of things we want to we wanna get into before the opening, which is scheduled for end of June, early July. So it's coming up quick. So Tiesto and Zed, two resident headliners. We spoke last week about a bunch of rumored headliners for the showroom. Uh, Katy Perry, Carrie Underwood, probably Celine Dion. Luke Bryan. Luke, right. Yep. So it, no, no 100% confirmation on those yet. But it's exciting that we're even having those conversations and that entertainment is back into the the mix here. Which, by the way, I was talking uh, with a friend who's in the entertainment industry here, and um, I was just asking, like, how are entertainers doing? Like, if, if I wanted to book somebody for an event, like, are there a lot of people available? And he was like, no everybody just about everybody is so booked up right now like the gig workers the entertainment gigs Good. they're coming back like the lounge performers all that kind of stuff the people who perform at um like vip events mm-hmm. for casino players that stuff is coming back uh, shows are coming back Cirque du Soleil is talking about you know bringing shows back by fall mm-hmm. so you know, we are getting there. Yeah, and it's but- good to hear that the entertainers here in Las Vegas who have really just, you know, kind of taken a gut punch. Right. By A lot of people have taken a gut punch over the past year. But, you know, when you're an entertainer and your entire industry is ripped right out from underneath you, that's hard. And, and, you, and it's something that I don't think anyone ever saw coming no. I mean why would entertainment Clearly. ever stop no <laughs> you know like what we never thought about that I was just cleaning off stuff on my computer the other day and I was looking at a podcast that you and I did it was like March 18th of 2020 and you and I were talking about how you know we're shut down for 30 days it's a big deal oh. and we were like we thought it was going to be 30 days you know <laughs> Man. <laughs> Little did we know. I mean, we were completely shut down for, you know, around that time period. But, you know, most of the restrictions and capacity limits and all that have lasted all the way until yeah. now. So who knew? So crazy. Uh, we love hearing from all our listeners around the world, too. And I know that um, we have a listener in Germany who's saying, like, I'm so ready to get back to Vegas, but they can't yet. So hopefully once these things start changing, you know, more flights will get added. Travel super expensive right now if you try and book an airport airline um, because they don't have the number of flights up yet for the de- to meet the demand right so I mean if you didn't get in when it was cheap you might have trouble finding a really good deal but the best advice that I can offer because I did finally book a trip back to see my family in upstate New York is I just kept looking and kept refreshing and kept searching and then finally I got something that fit and it wasn't overly expensive yeah well that's good mm-hmm. and i mean this should have been one of the one of our tips yeah over the past year but what we ended up doing is by because there were such great cancellation policies like yes you could book air travel and then cancel and have the credits good for like through 2022 mm-hmm. so that's what we did we found some really decent airfares and just booked them and canceled them and so now we've got all these credits to use now that um 
Yeah, now that air travel is is back again. I, I know. And when I did book mine, it was I think they were it was like one more week they were changing the policy for I think I booked American Airlines. So you could change it without a fee. Oh, so right, I, right, you can't yep. cancel it completely. So I did that because I wasn't sure how long I wanted to go for, depending on what kind of work we have going on here. So I thought, OK, well, let me just book this because in order to change it, they're not going to charge me a fee. So that was definitely uh, convenient. And also I was able to pick my seat, which is also a bonus. So it's like the little things now, especially because, you know, just the time that we're in, you want to more than ever pick your seat and know where you're going to be sitting and if you want to sit in the aisle or you know toward the back so anyway um yeah there's tons of tons of things that you can do to kind of get around it or get the best deal that you possibly can but things are going up but it's a sign that things are getting back so that's good too it is and uh, just want to give another uh shout out here to one of our vegas revealed listeners rob lewis who is a, a consistent listener and has reached out to us several times, is now on our wall of fame. That's right. Here at the Vegas Revealed Studios. And you know what? We're, we are going to need a sound effect for this too. So, so let, me, let me go through the library. like what you dug up there Roselli. <laughs> thank you rob from atlanta yeah he says he is itching to get out here he's planning to come in probably may or june and he's making a list of everything that he wants to do and i said listen direct message us let us know what you're up for we'll make you a list and rob is on our wall of fame because you know as we mentioned in uh at the end of our podcast each week we do have a link down in the show notes where you can make a donation and contribute to you know vegas revealed continuing in the future and can continuing to be able to bring you some really good content and rob is one of our uh wall of fame donors he is we appreciate it so much you know every little bit helps because we do do this on our free time and you listen we're at episode 64 we only missed like one or two weeks in the entire time we love doing it and we want to do it it's just sometimes we have to take work because we own our own media company as well and during these times obviously we've got to try and you know make all that money back that we lost through the year so we're very very busy and so any little bit helps and it gives us time to go okay you know, like this, this is great. This helps a little bit. So any little bit is appreciated. And Rob, you are our first donor and we love it. Yes. Thank you, Rob. Uh, what do you say we do our tips? All right. I got some good ones this week. First, I want to talk about Ubers and taxis. We talk about Ubers a lot, right? We do. And we've gotten some tips from some of our friends that listen that are Uber drivers saying, you know, Uber is very busy again and Lyft, but there aren't enough drivers. And so it can still be a little bit of a, a crutch there. If you order an Uber, there might not be a driver available and you're going to have to wait a lot longer than you thought you'd you know were because the whole point of uber is to kind of be instant like you book right. it and then you leave it, well and it's kind of like air travel the demand is just you know outpacing the supply yeah at this point there's more people who want ubers than there are uber drivers right now exactly so i booked an uber to my place to the airport no problem but i set a time i made an appointment and so mm -hmm. you know you can book a certain time that you want and and she was there you five schedule. minutes late yeah yep. schedule. schedule your ride schedule your ride and so i did that that was fine but i had trouble in la getting from the airport to my destination to my hotel because they could not find drivers in the area and it was a really? very busy time it was around wow. it was around traffic commute time huh. so it was like 5 30 p.m so that took a little while then oh my goodness when i landed back at mccarran i was gonna get an uber and it was like literally taking forever i kept trying to locate a driver trying to locate a driver then i walked out to the uber platform there on floor two and there was a sea of people oh geez and i just thought i mean this isn't gonna happen so i was like okay what do i do now because i didn't plan a ride with a friend or anything and i was like what do i do and then i was like oh taxis like hello we still have taxis so i looked over the thing i saw taxis lined up and no one there so i went well i'm gonna take a taxi home obviously it might cost me a little more but taxis have revamped the whole game because now our 
uh, taxi drivers use this app called Curb. So I downloaded it right in the taxi. First of all, it was clean. It was great. Um, and the guy was like, listen, people don't realize we're here. You can just hop right in. Really? And um, and so they have this Curb app yeah. that you can use your Apple Pay. You can do a credit card or your whatever. And wow. then you just punch in the code that's on a screen that's right in front of you. And it pairs it so that it knows how much your ride is going to be. And then as soon as you're about to get out, you just hit pay. And you can add the tip right there. Interesting. It was super easy. You didn't huh. have to do any of that, you know, paying cash and card and swiping and all that stuff. So it was really great. And it's in many ways, you know, like Uber because it was, you know, functioned on an app. Right. So the deal is um, it was a little bit more expensive. So the taxi driver was saying sometimes we cost, you know, kind of around the same as an Uber. I'm like, well, when it was searching for a driver, it told me that ride would be $17. Um, and then when I took the taxi, it was 27 So there was a significant price difference there. Okay. But you either wait or you go now. And so maybe if you're coming to town, download the Curb app and just know that if you can't get an Uber, you can get a taxi. Well, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. I totally like have forgotten that taxis exist. I know. That's the thing. That's what I said to my driver. I said, listen, people, you know, pushed you guys aside when Uber and Lyft started and now look who they need and who they're going to need taxi drivers again so right. I'm glad to see that business you know is probably going to be booming for them too well and I love that they've you know innovated and have the app and everything like you said so that's that's really cool um another tip so this is something that we've mentioned in the past there's a lot of the the my vegas uh slot machine mm-hmm. apps that where you can like play for free and you actually accumulate points that can be traded in for actual rewards here in Las Vegas. Like uh, we just went out and had a dinner at Lupo, which is a Wolfgang Puck restaurant over at Mandalay Bay, and it was uh, buy one entree, get one free. Wow, great! So that I mean, Lupo is a nice place. Yeah, it is. Uh, and there's hotel stays, lots of stuff. Um, there's a new My Vegas game that has just been revealed, and it is My Vegas Bingo. Oh, I love bingo. Bingo is so fun. Yeah, I was so excited about this. And it, I know you guys do the, the apps all the time and play. We, we do the apps. We collect the points. We redeem them for, for cool stuff all around Vegas. Um, but My Vegas Bingo, to celebrate the launch of this app, what they've done is they've partnered with five Las Vegas artists who have decorated these massive 200 pound, I think they're concrete- Bingo uh, balls. Bingo balls. (laughs) Yeah, it's really cool. And they're spreading them out in front of all MGM Resorts International properties. So there's one in front of the Mirage and there's one in front of Bellagio. And it's so cool. And they're gonna be there, I think for a few months. Yeah, so you can go around and go go around to MGM properties and kind of do your own scavenger hunt. Mm-hmm. Look for the the giant bingo balls and download the My Vegas app, the My Vegas Bingo app, and you can play back in your hotel room. You can play back when you go home to wherever it is mm-hmm. that you live and take that little bit of Vegas with you. Or if you're itching to get here, like I've said, many of our listeners are, and they just haven't been able to, like start playing, you know these with these apps yep. because then you can accumulate points and when you get here you can get like sean did you know buy one get one free entree or maybe a night free somewhere and so if you're itching for uh vegas download the app that's right there's Play my studios right? my vegas slots pop slots and my vegas bingo yeah it's play studios that's behind all these my vegas apps which okay. is great i love them yeah that's a great great tip and bingo is so much fun and you know what i like about bingo is it's simple. <laughs> Good old-fashioned bingo is... But yeah. do you use the dauber or oh, do yeah. you use the electronic screen? Dauber all the way. I mean, listen... See, I do the tablet. I do the electronic <laughs> tablet. Really? Then there's zero brain power needed. Yeah. I like a little action. I mean, it's funny. I grew up, you know... I, well, we grew up in the same part of New York State, and bingo was a big deal there. And we would go to, like, the go church the, gym. Or the Elks Lodge. <laughs> yes, the Elks Lodge. <laughs> there was different nights of the, the week. The VFW. I had my bingo bag, my bingo daubers. I had all of it. And we would go, and we had a blast. It was so much fun. And when you won, it was, like, the best feeling in the world. <laughs> so you had the, the bingo dauber bag in one hand yep. and the bowling ball in the other hand. <laughs> that's right. Bowling and bingo. <laughs> the two Bs. Are, that's how I grew up. That's what I did. But that was before iPads, iPhones, and all 
all that stuff that the kids use today. <laughs> <laughs> when you actually went out and did stuff. Exactly. All right, listen, um, we are excited to dive into nightlife in a couple of future episodes. We're going to dive into Resorts World more, like we mentioned, as it's getting closer to opening. And we're going to keep you posted on what's going on here in Las Vegas because things are constantly getting announced. Yeah, but again, uh, June 1st is when the floodgates open back to 100% capacity here in Las Vegas. That's the headline of episode 64 of Vegas Revealed. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. We got bills to pay. Packing up a suitcase. Let's take a holiday.